As you can imagine, the capacity of a wooden post is not a single number that you can write down and memorize, but it is rather design specific and changes based on the loading conditions. In this video, we will see what these limits are and what has the biggest influence on them. We will investigate a 4x4 timber post whose dimensions are 89 by 89 millimeters. But to understand the limits of the carrying capacity of a column, first we need to know how columns actually fail. In general, a column can fail in two main modes, buckling or material yielding and crushing. Material crushing can be seen only on short and stocky columns. This failure consists of the wood grains being compressed to the point where they start to wrinkle locally. Buckling, on the other hand, is a sudden lateral failure caused by a loss of stability. Buckling may sound like a complicated phenomenon, but in fact, it is very intuitive. We all have intuitive knowledge as to what would make an object susceptible to buckling. This can be illustrated by compressing a ruler. If the ruler is short, it can carry a significantly higher pressure before it breaks. Consequently, a long ruler is much easier to bend or buckle under even a small compressive load. That is, the longer the column, the weaker it becomes. The same intuition also applies to the design of columns that carry dozens of floors and thousands of tons in the real world. This intuitive idea was turned into sound mathematics by the Swiss mathematician Leonard Euler and has ever since been used in the design of columns. Here, in this video, we will reach the same equation by simply using our intuition. As we already figured out, the length of the column is inversely proportional to the column's capacity. The longer the column is, the less load it can carry. Furthermore, we know that the stiffness of the material has to also play a role, because stiffer materials are harder to bend. The same goes for the shape of the column, whose effects are captured by the moment of inertia of the column. If you want to learn more about the effects of the shape, check out our previous video on the secret of the I-beam. Now going back to the equation, we can see an additional pi squared term that arises from the solution of the differential equation and is related to the shape of the buckled curve, which follows a sinusoidal function. The last remaining factor is related to the end conditions of the column, which we will assume to be pin connected. This means that the column is held in place but is allowed to rotate about its ends, which makes the column more susceptible to bending. Fully fixing the ends would increase the carrying capacity of the post, however, providing a full moment fixity is difficult to achieve when it comes to wood connections. Semi-rigid connections are much more common, but for simplicity, we will assume no rotational stiffness in the connection, which would also produce a conservative estimation of the load carrying capacity. Based on Euler's formula, the only parameter that is not fixed and can affect the load carrying capacity is the length L. Theoretically speaking, as the length gets smaller, the load capacity will increase indefinitely. But of course, this is not the case because at some point, the compressive capacity of the material itself starts to govern the strength of the column rather than the buckling being the governing factor. For that reason, the Euler's curve is capped at the limit strength of the material. Failure in the material takes the form of local bulging, crushing or wrinkling of the wood grains. The right side of the curve corresponds to the global buckling of the entire member, in essence a loss of stability. If we lived in a perfect world, our analysis would have stopped here. However, wood is far from a perfect material and neither is our construction practice. Unless the compressive load is applied perfectly at the centroid of the column, the Euler formula is not exactly correct. Applying the load even with a slight eccentricity creates an undesired bending of the column that lowers its capacity. For example, applying the load only 10 millimeters off-center lowers its capacity by nearly 
when it comes to timber posts. But that's only imperfections due to construction. The wood itself has many irregularities such as knots, warping, irregular grains and so on. Furthermore, wood suffers from creep and rotting, which are significantly worsened if the material is exposed to a humid environment. Codes and standards around the world try to simplify these conditions with factors that engineers could select from a design manual. These factors and equations are mainly based on the Euler formula, however, they're modified to fit empirical data. As an example, we used the Canadian Wood Design Manual for comparison to the theoretical equation of a perfect wood. The Eurocode 5 and American Wood Design Standard conclude similar results. We assumed a 4x4 spruce pine fir timber post of a standard grade. For the viewers outside of North America, that is an 89 by 89 millimeter square post with a compression strength parallel to grain of 10.8 megapascals. After performing the calculation as per the provisions in the design manual, it turned out that the code is conservative for longer columns, however it allows higher loads for shorter columns that could not buckle. This is because when buckling is not an issue, the material can be loaded past its yielding point but still away from its ultimate capacity which is associated with a complete loss of strength. Any accidental eccentricity is not directly accounted for in the code, however its effects are captured by sufficient safety factors built into the codified equations. As a result, the maximum compressive load for a timber post of a length of 1 meter is around 8.7 tons, around 5 tons for a 2 meter long post and only 2.25 tons for a 3 meter long column. These numbers clearly illustrate the effects of buckling for longer members subjected to compressive loads. As always, this video is a short and simplified version of an actual column design practice with its sole focus on the compressive load. The design of end connections is ignored in this video. Further factors such as duration of the load, treatment of the wood, combined loading conditions and so on add additional complexity and considerations that need to be accounted for. If you found the explanations in this video interesting and intuitive, there is a good chance that you would also enjoy Brilliant. Brilliant is an interactive learning platform that helps you grasp complicated STEM topics through intuitive explanations and hands-on lessons. Engineering is really about an intuitive understanding of everyday phenomena. The courses at Brilliant are designed with exactly that purpose. They will help you develop a mindset of an engineer that will enable you to identify STEM applications in the real world. The interactive visuals and intuitive explanations help you understand why topics like algebra, statistics or geometry actually matter, rather than just solving repetitive problems. Achieving deep conceptual understanding will enable you to comprehend engineering topics that may have seemed complex and confusing before. Head to brilliant.org forward slash the engineering hub to get started for free with Brilliant's interactive lessons. The first 200 listeners will also get 20% off on an annual membership. And thank you for watching. If you like this video, consider subscribing to our channel. See you next time.